The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. What's the exact difference between orchestration and arranging? Though this question may seem naive on the face of it, the answer is actually quite profound, cutting to the heart of what orchestrators do as a profession. The simplest answer is that arranging is the craft of taking an existing musical idea or work and scoring it to a specific set of performers. Within that definition, orchestration is just a kind of arranging. Quite intricate and glamorous, but arranging all the same. Obviously, that's not the whole story, so let's break things down a bit more. There are many types of arranging. Transcription is the act of taking notes of a manuscript and applying them to other instruments with few or no changes. This is the bluntest, most fundamental form of arranging. Adaptation is a much freer approach, which can be anything from a transcription that adds textural elements, all the way to a reinterpretation that bears little resemblance to the original. In a sense, most first-quality orchestral transcriptions, like those of Ravel from his own piano works, are adaptations, as many musical features need to be reworked in order to sound orchestral. Without such careful handling, a note-for-note -note transcription may well sound like a clumsily orchestrated piano. Then there are two other tasks to consider, reduction and expansion. Taking an orchestral work and rewriting it for one or two pianos is a reduction, especially critical for the rehearsal of ballet, opera, and theatrical scores. There's a skill to this that goes far beyond simply pressing the arrange button on a notation application. The music must fit the hand of the player and have a natural pianistic flow, as well as adequately express the emotion and context of the original score. Since piano vocal scores are often performed at auditions and recitals, and even command performances, it's essential that these reductions have the same amount of artistic commitment as an orchestral score, even if the scope is admittedly far smaller. What we do as orchestrators is largely expansion going in the other direction. Whether we're scoring our own original works or adapting others, the product of one person's creativity and ingenuity expands to engage many other musicians in a mass performance. That carries huge amounts of responsibility, and yet the possibilities for a fertile imagination are limitless. A couple of other thoughts about this. Aside from orchestration, there's a huge variety of arranging going on. Student versions of pop and film music, adaptations for marching and concert band, any number of standards for jazz combos, and so on. Some of these fields of arranging are every bit as specialized as orchestration and deserve a huge amount of respect. You may be fortunate to someday combine many arranging styles into one work if you get a crossover scoring job. Since this last type of project is becoming ever more essential to the financial survival of professional orchestras, it's a genre that we orchestrators should also embrace. Remember that the next time someone sacrifices popular music on the altar of concert music. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, with just a few more words about the difference between orchestration and arranging. While the video I just made is a more theoretical look at the whole definition of arranging, there is a practical side as well. In certain countries and industries, the words orchestration and arranging have separate and specific categories of employment. According to some of these categories, an orchestrator arranges music for concert, film, and television productions, while an arranger's work is more along the lines of popular music, band scoring, and musical theater. Of course, there's a lot of blurring of lines here and there, and many orchestrators are comfortable with just about any category of musical arranging, from making a quick lead sheet all the way to orchestrating a symphonic work. But it's worth pointing out that along these different lines of work, some clients may make a definite distinction between orchestration and arranging, so you should find out what that is, and how it's being defined so that they don't assume that you can't do the work.
And you should also be aware that some specialists of certain types of arranging may be preferred in certain situations to absolutely set the client's mind at ease about the success of their production. So don't assume that your experience with one kind of arranging automatically equals expertise with another kind. All the same, I'm seeing more and more non-specialist arrangers who are turning out brilliant scores in many different categories, so the time may well come when a more theoretical way of defining things is needed. In which case, I hope the principles I proposed at the start of this video prove useful, if they're needed. 